from the Greek words teledistant and pathos feeling, perception, or experience, refers to the purported transmission of information from one person to another without using any known physical means of communication. This concept has fascinated humans for centuries, appearing in various forms across cultures, religions, and scientific inquiries. While many people claim to have experienced telepathic phenomena, the scientific consensus is that there is no reliable evidence for the existence of telepathy. Despite this, the idea continues to captivate the public imagination and has been the subject of numerous studies, experiments, and fictional works. The concept of mind-to-mind -mind communication has roots in various ancient cultures and religious traditions, though it wasn't always referred to as telepathy. While the Bible doesn't explicitly mention telepathy, some passages have been interpreted as describing telepathic-like phenomena. Samuel 9, 15, 16, now, the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. This passage could be interpreted as God communicating telepathically with Samuel, though it's more commonly viewed as divine revelation. The Quran also contains passages that some interpret as relating to telepathic-like communication. Surah Al-Anfal 8.12 Remember thy Lord inspired the angels with the message I am, with you give firmness to the believers, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. This verse describes Allah communicating with angels, which some interpret as a form of telepathic inspiration. The ancient Greeks and Romans had concepts that resembled telepathy. Aristotle's principle of sympathy, this philosophical idea, suggested that there was a natural affinity between certain objects or people, allowing for a kind of action at a distance. Pliny the Elder wrote about the ability of certain individuals to fascinate or bewitch others with their gaze, a concept that shares some similarities with telepathic influence. Various Eastern philosophical and religious traditions have long held beliefs in mental connections between individuals. In Hinduism, the concept of darshan involves the idea of seeing and being seen by a deity, which some interpret as a form of telepathic connection. Buddhist meditation practices, particularly in Tibetan traditions, include techniques for developing cities or supernatural abilities, some of which resemble telepathy. The modern concept of telepathy began to take shape in the 19th century, influenced by the spiritualist movement and early psychological research, mesmerism and animal magnetism. Franz Anton Mesmer's theory of animal magnetism, developed in the late 18th century, proposed that a physical fluid allowed one person to influence another's thoughts and actions. While not telepathy as we understand it today, this concept laid groundwork for later ideas about mental influence. The spiritualist movement, which gained popularity in the mid-19th century, often included claims of telepathic communication with the dead. Notable figures include the Fox sisters in 1848, Kate and Margaret Fox claimed to communicate with spirits through rapping sounds, sparking widespread interest in spiritualism. Emanuel Swedenborg, this 18th century Swedish scientist and theologian, claimed to have the ability to visit heaven and hell and communicate with angels, influencing later spiritualist ideas. Some scientists began to take an interest in studying these phenomena. Sir William Crookes, a respected physicist, Crookes conducted experiments with mediums in the 1870s, including tests of telepathic abilities. Sir William Barrett, another physicist, Barrett began investigating telepathy and other psychic phenomena in the 1870s, coining of telepathy in early research 1880 to 1930. The term telepathy was coined in 1882 by Frederick W. H. Myers, a founder of the Society for Psychical Research in London. This marked the beginning of more organized research into the phenomenon. The Society for Psychical Research, founded in 1882, was the first organized effort to study telepathy and other paranormal phenomena scientifically. Key figures included Frederick Myers in addition to coining the term telepathy, Myers conducted numerous experiments and wrote extensively on the subject. Henry Sidgwick, the first president of the Society for Psychical Research, Sidgwick oversaw early telepathy experiments. Edmund Gurney Gurney co-authored Phantasms of the Living with Myers and Frank Podmore, a seminal work on telepathy and apparitions. The Society for Psychical Research conducted various experiments to test for telepathy. Card-guessing test subjects would attempt to identify cards chosen by a sender in another room. 
Drawing reproduction a sender would draw a simple image and attempt to transmit it mentally to a receiver. Case study the Creary sisters. In the 1880s, the Society for Psychical Research conducted experiments with the Creary sisters, who claimed to have telepathic abilities. Initially, the results seemed promising, with the sisters correctly guessing objects and cards at a rate significantly above chance. However, it was later discovered that the sisters had used a code to cheat, highlighting the challenges of controlling for fraud in telepathy experiments. Founded in 1885, the American Society for Psychical Research also began conducting telepathy research. Notable figures included William James, the prominent psychologist, served as president of the American Society for Psychical Research and conducted his own telepathy experiments. James Hervey Hislop, a philosophy professor who became a full-time psychical researcher, Hislop conducted numerous studies on telepathy and other paranormal phenomena. Sigmund Freud and telepathy. Interestingly, Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, showed some interest in telepathy. In his 1922 paper Dreams and Telepathy, Freud suggested that telepathy might play a role in the formation of dreams. While Freud remained skeptical, he believed that psychoanalysis should not dismiss the possibility of telepathy outright. This period saw increased interest in telepathy from both scientific and government institutions, partly fueled by World War II and the subsequent Cold War. J.B. Rhine established the Duke University Parapsychology Laboratory in 1930, conducting extensive research on telepathy and other psi phenomena. Standardization of Extrasensory Perception Card Test Zener Cards Introduction of Statistical Analysis to Parapsychology Development of the term Extrasensory Perception ESP Ryan's experiments often involved a sender looking at a randomly selected Zener card while a receiver in another room attempted to identify the card. Ryan reported statistically significant results, though these were later criticized on methodological grounds. Soviet Research the Soviet Union invested heavily in telepathy research, often framed as biological communication. Leonid Vasilyev conducted experiments on long-distance telepathy. Vladimir Bektorev studied thought transference in animals and humans. In the 1930s, Vasilyev claimed to have successfully conducted telepathy experiments over a distance of 1,700 kilometers between Leningrad and Sevastopol, World War II and intelligence agency interest. Various intelligence agencies became interested in the potential military applications of telepathy. The U.S. Navy conducted experiments on telepathy for potential use in submarine communication. The British military intelligence allegedly used alleged psychics to attempt to locate German U-boats. This period saw both increased skepticism and new approaches to telepathy research. Remote viewing programs. In the 1970s and 1980s, the government funded research into remote viewing, a practice that incorporates elements of telepathy and clairvoyance. Project Scanate 1970s, Stargate Project 1978 to 1995. In one famous case, remote viewer Pat Price claimed to have psychically seen a Soviet weapons factory in the Urals. While some of his descriptions seemed to match satellite imagery, skeptics argue that the correlations were vague and could be attributed to cold reading techniques. Developed in the 1970s, the Gansfeld procedure aimed to create an environment more conducive to telepathic communication. The receiver is placed in a state of mild sensory deprivation. The sender attempts to telepathically transmit information about a randomly selected target. In a meta-analysis published in 1985, psychologist Charles Onerton claimed that Gansfeld experiments showed a consistent, statistically significant effect supporting the existence of telepathy. However, Subsequent analyses by skeptics challenged these conclusions. Twin telepathy studies. Research into alleged telepathic connections between twins gained popularity. Lyndon Eaves conducted twin studies at Virginia Commonwealth University. Susan Blackmore investigated claims of twin telepathy. In the 1990s, Blackmore conducted a study where one twin was subjected to mild shocks, while the other's physiological responses were monitored. She found no evidence of telepathic connection. Inception of the Global Consciousness Project, 1998. This controversial project uses a network of random number generators to test for possible effects of mass human consciousness on physical systems. Methodological flaws critics have pointed out issues such as sensory leakage, optional stopping, and data selection bias in many telepathy experiments. 
Decline effect, many initially positive results fail to replicate in subsequent studies. The Stargate project, despite some claimed successes, was eventually terminated due to lack of reliable, actionable intelligence produced by remote viewing. File drawer effect negative results are less likely to be published, potentially skewing the overall body of literature. Multiple comparisons problem. When many statistical tests are performed, some will appear significant by chance alone. Alternative explanations. Several non-telepathic explanations have been proposed for apparent telepathic experiences. Cold reading A technique where general statements are interpreted as specific insights. Barnum effect the tendency to accept vague, general personality descriptions as uniquely applicable to oneself. Confirmation bias the tendency to remember hits and forget misses in apparent telepathic communications. While not telepathy in the traditional sense, brain-computer interfaces have shown some success in transmitting simple messages between individuals. In a 2014 study, researchers transmitted the words Ola and Chow between subjects in India and France using EEG and TMS technology. However, this required extensive technological mediation and was not direct mind-to-mind -mind communication. The persistent belief in telepathy despite lack of scientific evidence can be attributed to various factors. Cognitive biases such as the clustering illusion seeing patterns in random events. Cultural influences many cultures have traditions that include telepathy-like concepts. Psychological needs belief in telepathy may fulfill needs for connection and meaning. The Maimonides dream telepathy experiments in the 1960s and 1970s. Researchers at the Maimonides Medical Center conducted a series of experiments testing telepathic influence on dreams. In these studies, the sender would concentrate on a randomly selected art print while a receiver slept in a monitored room. Upon waking, the receiver's dreams were recorded and judged for similarity to the target image. The researchers reported statistically significant results, with dreams often containing elements reminiscent of the target images. However, subsequent attempts to replicate these findings have been inconsistent. Critics have pointed out potential methodological flaws such as possible sensory leakage and experimenter bias in dream interpretation. This case illustrates both the intriguing results that have fueled continued interest in telepathy research and the challenges in conducting and interpreting such experiments. While the idea of telepathy continues to fascinate many, scientific evidence for its existence remains elusive. The majority of experimental results can be explained by methodological flaws, statistical artifacts, were known psychological phenomena. However, research into brain-to-brain -brain interfaces and other neurotechnologies may offer new insights into the possibilities and limitations of technologically mediated mental communication. Philosophical debates surrounding telepathy. The concept of telepathy raises numerous philosophical questions, touching on issues of mind, consciousness, causality, and the nature of reality itself. Here are some key philosophical debates. The existence of telepathy would have profound implications for our understanding of the relationship between mind and body. Dualist Perspective Proponents argue that telepathy supports dualism, the idea that the mind is separate from the physical brain. If thoughts can be transmitted without physical mediation, it might suggest that consciousness is not solely a product of brain activity. Materialists counter that even if telepathy existed, it could potentially be explained by as yet undiscovered physical processes. They argue that the lack of a plausible physical mechanism for telepathy is a strong argument against its existence. Telepathy raises questions about the nature and boundaries of individual consciousness. Some philosophers, like Andy Clark and David Chalmers, propose that the mind extends beyond the boundaries of the skull. Telepathy could be seen as an extreme form of this extension, where minds directly interact. Theorists like Roger Penrose have suggested that quantum processes in the brain might explain consciousness. Some speculate that these quantum processes could potentially account for telepathic phenomena, though this remains highly controversial. Causality and Physical Laws The possibility of telepathy challenges our understanding of causality and the laws of physics. Telepathy seems to imply action at a distance, violating principles of local causation. Some have drawn parallels to quantum entanglement, though the relevance of quantum effects at the macroscopic level is disputed. If telepathy involves the transfer of information without energy exchange, 
it could potentially violate the law of conservation of energy. Counterarguments suggest that information transfer doesn't necessarily require energy transfer in a classical sense. Epistemology and the nature of knowledge. Telepathy raises questions about the nature of knowledge and how we acquire it. If telepathy were possible, it might provide a form of direct knowledge acquisition, bypassing traditional sensory channels. This challenges empiricist views that all knowledge comes through sensory experience, privacy, and personal identity. The possibility of mind-to-mind -mind communication raises ethical concerns about mental privacy. It also questions the nature of personal identity. If thoughts can be shared, where does one mind end and another begin? Philosophy of science. The study of telepathy has implications for how we define and conduct science. Telepathy research challenges us to consider what constitutes legitimate scientific inquiry. Critics argue that the unfalsifiability of many telepathy claims places it outside the realm of science. Some proponents argue that acceptance of psi phenomena like telepathy would constitute a Kuhnian paradigm shift in science. Skeptics counter that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, which has not been forthcoming. Now, let's examine some detailed case studies of telepathy experiments. Pierce and Pratt were stationed in different buildings about 100 yards apart. Using a randomization process, Pratt would turn up one card every 50 seconds from a deck of extrasensory perception cards. Pierce would attempt to identify the card and record his guess. Over 1,850 trials, Pierce achieved a hit rate of 32%, significantly above the expected chance rate of 20%. The odds against this result occurring by chance were calculated at 1 in 10 to the power of 22. Lack of independent replication possible sensory leakage or recording errors. Questions about the randomization process. This study was one of the most impressive early demonstrations of apparent extrasensory perceptions and influenced much subsequent research. Possible sensory leakage or recording errors. Questions about the randomization process. The receiver is placed in a state of mild sensory deprivation, the Gansfeld state. The sender attempts to mentally transmit information about a randomly selected target. After the session, the receiver is presented with four potential targets and asked to rank them based on their similarity to their mental impressions. Meta-analyses by Bame and Honorton 1994 and later by Storm in all 2010 reported small but statistically significant effects. The meta-analysis found an overall hit rate of 32%, where 25% would be expected by chance. Methodological flaws in some studies. File drawer effect, unpublished negative results. Decline effect later studies showing smaller effects. The Gansfeld studies, parapsychologist E. Ryan was criticized for potentially selective reporting in his extrasensory perception card experiments, where some unsuccessful series were excluded from analysis. Comprehensive meta-analyses that attempt to include unpublished data. Encouragement of publication of null results. Misuse or misinterpretation of statistics can lead to false conclusions about telepathic effects. Multiple comparisons performing many statistical tests increases the likelihood of false positives. P-hacking manipulating data or analyses to achieve statistical significance. Misinterpretation of P-values treating P greater than 0.05 as definitive proof rather than a threshold of interest. Critics of Daryl Bame's precognition studies argued that his positive results could be attributed to running multiple analyses and selectively reporting those that achieved significance. Correction for multiple comparisons Bonferroni correction. Pre-registration of analytical methods. Use of effect sizes and confidence intervals in addition to p-values. The beliefs, expectations, and behaviors of experimenters can inadvertently influence the results of telepathy studies. Unconscious cueing experimenters may unknowingly provide subtle cues to subjects. Expectancy effects experimenters' beliefs about psychokinesis phenomena might influence their conduct or interpretation of experiments. Fraud in rare cases, experimenters have been caught deliberately manipulating results. In the case of the psychic horse Clever Hans, it was discovered that the horse was responding to unconscious cues from its handler rather than demonstrating true mathematical ability. Double-blind protocols, automated testing procedures to minimize human interaction, independent replication by skeptical researchers, 
Characteristics and behaviors of study participants can introduce biases or confounds. Self-selection bias volunteers for psi experiments may have pre-existing beliefs that influence their performance. Psychological factors participants' moods, expectations, or desire to please the experimenter can affect results. Strategic guessing participants might use non-psychokinesis strategies to improve their performance. In some Gansfeld experiments, it was noted that participants who believed in psi phenomena tended to perform better than skeptics, raising questions about expectancy effects. Careful screening and selection of participants. Controlling for belief in psychokinesis phenomena. Use of decoy tasks to prevent strategic guessing. The inability to consistently replicate positive results is a major challenge in telepathy research. Decline effect initially strong results tend to diminish in subsequent studies. Experimenter psychokinesis affects some parapsychologists argue that psychokinesis abilities of the experimenters themselves might influence results, making replication by skeptics difficult. Lack of a theoretical framework. Without a clear mechanism for telepathy, it's challenging to identify and control all relevant variables. The initial strong results of the Gansfeld experiments have been difficult to replicate consistently, with later studies often showing smaller effect sizes. Large-scale, multi-lab replication efforts, standardization of protocols across different research groups, development of more robust theoretical models to guide experimentation, control conditions, and alternative explanations. Ensuring that apparent telepathic effects cannot be explained by conventional means is crucial. Inadequate controls failure to account for all possible non-psychokinesis explanations. Occam's razor when conventional explanations and psychokinesis are both possible. The simpler explanation is generally preferred. Placebo affects the mere belief in the possibility of telepathy might influence participant behavior or perception. In some dream telepathy studies, Critics argued that the judging process, where judges match dream reports to potential targets, was susceptible to subjective biases. Inclusion of sham conditions example sessions where no actual telepathic sending occurs. Rigorous elimination of conventional explanations before considering psychokinesis. Use of objective, quantifiable outcome measures where possible. The lack of a clear, Universally accepted definition of telepathy and its underlying mechanisms complicates research. Vague or shifting definitions. What exactly constitutes a telepathic effect can vary between studies. Lack of a proposed mechanism without a plausible physical mechanism for telepathy. It's difficult to design targeted experiments. Signal to noise ratio if telepathy exists. Distinguishing it from mental noise is challenging. Some researchers have proposed quantum entanglement as a mechanism for telepathy, but there's no clear consensus on how quantum effects could scale to macroscopic brain processes. Development of more precise operational definitions of telepathy. Interdisciplinary collaboration to propose and test potential mechanisms. Focus on effect size and replicability rather than merely statistical significance. Technological and measurement issues. The limitations of technology and measurement techniques can introduce errors or ambiguities. Measurement precision subtle psychokinesis effects might be below the threshold of current measurement capabilities. Data processing artifacts complex data analysis techniques can sometimes introduce spurious patterns. Lack of real-time measures many studies rely on post hoc reports rather than real-time measurement of telepathic transmission. In EEG studies of telepathy, the complexity of brain activity makes it challenging to isolate potential telepathic signals from background neural noise. Development of more sensitive measurement techniques. Use of multiple converging measures. Application of advanced signal processing techniques while being mindful of potential artifacts. The methodological challenges in telepathy research are numerous and complex. While many of these issues are common to other areas of scientific inquiry, they are particularly acute in psi research due to the elusive nature of the phenomena being studied and the extraordinary claims being made. Addressing these methodological issues requires a combination of rigorous experimental design, advanced statistical techniques, technological innovation, and a willingness to critically examine and improve research practices. Even with these efforts, the fundamental challenge remains. Distinguishing genuine telepathic effects, if they exist, 
from the myriad ways in which our minds and experimental setups can create the illusion of telepathic communication. The ongoing debate about the reality of telepathy is, in many ways, a debate about these methodological issues. Proponents argue that when all these factors are carefully controlled for, evidence for telepathy remains. Skeptics contend that apparent positive results can be fully explained by some combination of these methodological flaws. Resolving this debate will require continued refinement of research methods and a commitment to rigorous, open scientific inquiry. The intersection of telepathy claims with other paranormal phenomena is a fascinating area that highlights the complex web of beliefs, experiences, and research in the realm of the unexplained. This intersection reveals both similarities in how these phenomena are studied and experienced, as well as the unique challenges each presents. Let's explore this intersection in detail. Telepathy is often grouped with other psychic or psychokinesis phenomena, including the alleged ability to gain information about an object, person, location, or physical event through means other than the known senses. Both involve acquiring information without using known sensory channels. Some researchers argue that apparent telepathy might actually be clairvoyance of the sender's mental state. The remote viewing experiments conducted by Russell Targ and Harold Puthoff at Stanford Research Institute often blurred the lines between telepathy and clairvoyance. Viewers sometimes reported information that seemed to come from the minds of the experimenters suggesting telepathy, and sometimes from direct perception of the target location suggesting clairvoyance. Precognition the purported ability to see or predict future events. Intersection with telepathy, some researchers propose that apparent telepathy might actually be precognition of future feedback about the target. The feeling of being stared at phenomenon, studied by Rupert Sheldrake, has been interpreted both as a form of telepathy direct mind-to-mind -mind communication and as precognition foreknowledge of the future act of turning to look. The alleged ability to influence physical systems without physical interaction. Intersection with telepathy, some theories propose that telepathy and psychokinesis might be different aspects of the same underlying psychokinesis ability. The Global Consciousness Project, which uses a network of random number generators to detect potential effects of mass human consciousness, explores a possible link between collective mental states of form of mass telepathy and physical effects on electronic systems of form psychokinesis near-death experiences, and out-of-body experiences. These experiences often include elements that resemble telepathy. Many near-death experiences reports include instances of seeming telepathic communication with deceased relatives or spiritual beings. Some near-death experiences researchers, like Dr. Pim Van Lommel, have proposed that consciousness might exist independently of the brain, potentially allowing for telepathic-like communication. Out-of-body experience. Some individuals report being able to perceive distant locations or events during out-of-body experiences, which could be interpreted as a form of remote viewing related to telepathy and clairvoyance. The well-known case of Pam Reynolds, who underwent a standstill operation, included elements of both near-death experience and apparent veridical perception of events in the operating room while clinically dead, challenging conventional explanations and suggesting possible psi phenomena mediumship and channeling. These practices involve claimed communication with non-physical entities. Intersection with telepathy, the information supposedly received from spirits or other entities could be interpreted as a form of telepathy, either with the deceased or with living individuals. Some researchers propose that mediumistic communications might involve a combination of telepathy with the sitter, clairvoyance, and possibly precognition. The Cross Correspondences, a series of mediumistic communications in the early 20th century, were seen by some as evidence of coordinated communication from deceased individuals, potentially involving both postmortem survival and telepathic abilities. Carl Jung's concept of synchronicity often intersects with claims of telepathy, meaningful coincidences that cannot be explained by normal causal relationships. Intersection with telepathy. Some researchers pose that apparent synchronicities might be manifestations of telepathic connections between individuals or between individuals and a collective unconscious. The library angel phenomenon, where a book falls off a shelf containing exactly the information a person needs, has been interpreted both as synchronicity and as a form of psychokinetic or telepathic influence on the environment. Extraterrestrial and UFO phenomena. Claims of alien contact 
often include reports of telepathic communication. Many alleged contactees report receiving telepathic messages from extraterrestrial beings. Some ufologists propose that advanced civilizations might use telepathy as a form of faster-than-light communication. The Betty and Barney Hill abduction case, one of the most famous in UFO lore, included claims of telepathic communication with the alleged alien abductors, collective consciousness, and field theories. Various theories propose the existence of a collective or field-like aspect of consciousness, morphic resonance. Rupert Sheldrake's theory suggests that memory is inherent in nature, and that organisms inherit a collective memory from past members of their species. This could potentially explain apparent telepathic connections between individuals. Theories that propose quantum effects in the brain might account for telepathy and other psi phenomena. Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose's orchestra or theory is one example, though it remains highly speculative. Spiritual and religious experiences. Many spiritual traditions include experiences that resemble telepathy. Prayer and meditation are sometimes described in terms similar to telepathic communication with the divine or universal consciousness. Mystical experiences across various traditions often include sensations of unity or direct knowledge that could be interpreted as a form of cosmic telepathy. The Quaker practice of silent meetings, where participants wait for divine inspiration, sometimes results in experiences that resemble group telepathy, with multiple individuals reporting similar thoughts or impulses. Research into dreams sometimes intersects with telepathy claims. Shared dreams, where multiple individuals report similar dream content, have been studied in relation to potential telepathic effects. Some cultures have traditions of intentional dream sharing or dream telepathy. The Sanwa people of Malaysia traditionally placed great importance on dreams, including practices that some have interpreted as involving dream telepathy, though the anthropological accuracy of these accounts has been questioned. The intersection of telepathy with other paranormal phenomena presents several challenges. Definitional issues the boundaries between different phenomena are often blurry, making it difficult to isolate and study telepathy specifically. Methodological complexities studying multiple interconnected phenomena increases the difficulty of controlling for confounding variables. The lack of a unified theory to explain these diverse phenomena makes it challenging to design cohesive research programs. Credibility concerns the association of telepathy with a wide range of contested phenomena can lead to credibility issues in mainstream scientific circles. Cultural and interpretive factors. The way these experiences are interpreted can vary significantly across cultures and belief systems, complicating cross-cultural research. The intersection of telepathy claims with other paranormal phenomena reveals a complex landscape of human experience and belief. While these intersections provide rich ground for exploration, they also complicate the scientific study of telepathy. The challenge for researchers is to navigate this complexity, distinguishing between genuine anomalous phenomena, if they exist in the various psychological, cultural, and methodological factors that can create the appearance of paranormal connections. AS research continues. It may be that these various phenomena are found to have distinct explanations, or conversely, that they are different manifestations of a yet undiscovered aspect of human consciousness or natural law. Until then, the intersection of telepathy with other paranormal claims remains a provocative and challenging area of inquiry, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of consciousness, reality, and the human experience.